Book Buzz, HarperCollins Book Buzz. Check it out. Do 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 do. Book Buzz, HarperCollins Book Buzz. Brought to you by Library Love Fest. Hello, everyone. How are you? Welcome to yet another very special episode of Library Love Fest. Door to door, galley chat, whatever we're calling it these days. I'm Virginia. Who's with me? Lainey Mays. Hello. I'm Grace. Hi. And today we have a very, very special guest. Perhaps you've heard of him. His name is Chris Connolly. Christopher Connolly, show your face. Yeah. Oh, I'm here. The crowd Hi, goes everyone. wild. The crowd goes <laughs> wild. My God, my camera's shaking. Whoa. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How are How's you? How's everyone? We did this already in the pre-show. We're just we're on the we're on the same page, asking the same questions at the same time. I am good. I am great. Happy to be here. How are you all doing? <laughs> I think they're all, <laughs> I know they're very happy and excited to see you. Yeah, let me know who's there because uh, I'm I'm not monitoring the Facebook, which is uh not that's not used to be my old my old job. You now, yeah, really am. There, it's popping off. The chat's popping off. Like, it's Hello, popping friends, off. Friends, wow. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, old friends and new friends. Chris, you're not in the Tiki Hut anymore. You're not with the with the video behind you of uh, all the waves crashing and the palm trees swaying. Oh, I know. I know. I had I had to uh, up the ante, I guess. I, I you know, this I'm, I'm at home right now. Um, and yeah, I'm the. I'm so confused. What are we talking about? What my title is now? Should I introduce myself? <laughs> yeah. So everybody, I'm sure that everybody watching right now knows who you are. There's been lots of uh, great re, um, you know, re replies to our announcement that you were coming on. But for the two of you out there who don't know chris connelly used to be part of the library love fest team for six years chris just about yes um and then chris went on to um still work at harper and he is the assistant marketing manager for harper collins imprint general trade so um we're so we always said we're going to have you back when you're you know when you're settled down and talk to us about some of the books that you're working on, but we had a blast with you. You know, you were such a great part of our team and now we have Grace with us and Lainey's bumped up and it's just like this, I don't know. It's always good to have, uh, you know, a strong team and we had one and we have one, but we're so happy to see you from time to time because we're on the same floor. Um, <laughs> and um, anyway, so, so Chris, I, we thought it'd be kind of cool if you talked a little bit about the switcheroo from library marketing to trade marketing like what's the same what's different and then yeah. you know you can talk about some of the books you're working on what you what are you jazzed about man sure well virginia actually forced me out of the position she kicked me out of the team we all know the truth that's what happened mm -hmm. no obviously not it's all love um yeah, so essentially the change is, again, I learned pretty much everything I know about publishing from Virginia Stanley and team uh, and was able to take those skills, you know, the video marketing, the photography, the book buzzing and move it over to trade marketing. So I'm working on the, the consumer facing campaigns for Harper imprints, front list titles. It's a wide range. I usually work on about 10 titles each season, so like 30 each year. And it's, yeah, it's a wide range. We we, we cover Harper, we cover Harper Design. Uh, so I've worked on, you know, travel books, photography books, fiction, nonfiction, uh, worked on the club, which was a Reese's Book Club pick. And yeah, essentially I am working with the editor and author and agent early on to decide, you know, how we're going to present the book to the market. I work with our sales reps for everything they need as they go to their accounts, you know, and 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 sell in their books. So that might be graphics, you know, infographics, bullet points, whatever they need. Um, 
And yeah, and then I work on the advertising and the uh, consumer marketing campaigns at on sale. So I do a lot of mailings. I work with influencers. I do graphics for Amazon and other outlets. Um, and just kind of, yeah, work work with the entirety of the team to bring the book to the market. And I also always talk about kind of, I'm, I, I'm kind of the custodian for the book's presence online. I feel I just want to make sure that people know how to find the book once our publicists who do amazing work send our authors, whether it's, you know, publicity hits or events, people look for these books. And I want to make sure that when they Google whatever, any book that they want, that they find it and it's beautiful and accessible, copy is great and, and, and on point. And um, again, the, the creative assets look great. And again, most of those skills, if not all, uh, started with this very team, this hollowed ground of library marketing. So that's what I do uh, in a nutshell. And it's a lot of fun, but less book talking, I will say, less, less, less chatting books. It's a different kind of presentation now when I'm doing our key, you know, our, our meetings just kind of going over marketing plans and whatever. It's a, it's a little different. So uh, it is good to just like chat books and, and buzz books with y'all. So, what, well, you know, uh, you are such a, are such a great book talker because when we have um, launch your sales conference, all of a sudden, Chris's name will pop up because we're doing these virtually, and all of a sudden, Chris is talking about a book, and we're all like, "Yeah, Chris." Virtually, yes, yes, no, no, yeah. Um, Bring a good energy to it. I always am like, "Wait, yes. what is this book? I have to look into it." Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. That's that's the point. I, you know, I'm advocating not only to consumers, but I am. I do need to communicate the book to our sales force of which of course you three are valuable members but you know that is really it's not only building excitement externally outside the company but it is really communicating to our sales staff and our employees like you know how we value this book how we're approaching it the you know the potential we see for it in the market so it's a lot of fun and it's touching the book on a lot of different places along its publication journey so it's been a great experience. And again, just the sheer diversity of our books really keeps it fresh and interesting as well. So um, can you talk for a second, Chris, about the timing, like the time frame of if what the difference is, if there is a difference between, you know, we're always pushing books on um, and promoting books early to librarians. What's what's your time frame? And, we'll and yeah, I mean, you all are really in in a lot of ways ahead of me as far as well, so like we just had sales conference for summer of 2023 and that was like the finalization of our plans for next summer's titles you know that's something where i'm presenting and putting together very early plans and which i appreciate because the planning is kind of built into our scheduling so it's not like a month out from publication and i need to decide what i'm doing it's a very collaborative long tail effort with our sales force and with our editors and with everyone else to really fine tune like what we're going to do. Uh, it's not by the seat of our pants, as we would say. So yeah, um, you know, when our editors launch their titles, that's when we give our wish list. So, you know, they're launching, you know, they'll be launching fall 23. I should know the date, but it's coming up. It's pretty much like a year in advance, though. Maybe, and and that's when we're really deciding and divvying up what we'll be working on. So we'll know about a year in advance what we'll be working on at that time next year. Um, and then the bulk of our plans, you know, it depends on the author. If there's someone who's like a social media star who's going to have like a big pre-order campaign, you know, that's going to have a way bigger lead up, lead time. There's going to be more involvement in advance of publication um but once we kind of get through you know launch get our titles pre-planning where we and you all know this process i don't know for librarians everyone else watching just like how multi-tiered the process is from a book's conception to going on sale but you know we have pre-planning we kind of know what we're going to be doing and we, we're finalizing things we have planning we have sales conference where things are really nailed down but then at that point, there's a little bit of a gap. And then I think, you know, we'll talk with agents and editors, you know, maybe two months in advance of publication, three months in advance of publication and stay in touch, give them everything they need. But then things really, I think, heat up about, you know, two to three weeks in advance of publication where I'm 
you know, doing influencer mailing, working on our ad designs, you know, our booking e-blasts, things like that. So, yeah, I mean, we're, there's, there's, it's an interesting cadence to, I think, trade publishing and that you all are always on with a book because there's always stuff coming out. Whereas like, you know, I might have a book on sale and then three weeks without a book on sale. And of course that's valuable time to finalize last minute things, but um, yeah, it's, it's not like a steady flow with a given title, you know, it's, it's, and, and it's interesting that way, but we never lack things to do. That's for sure. Um, and, you know, obviously Harper has grown, Harper Collins has grown. So we, we all have more titles and a more diverse array of titles. And uh, yeah, it makes it very, it just, yeah, very interesting, very fun. So that was a long winded answer. Did I, did, did I clarify anything there? Did you they? totally did. That was okay. awesome. I think you're being Lady. nice, but thank you. So now, um, okay. So we're going to talk about, you're going to talk about some books that, but that was great, Chris. That's There's actually a question from Vicky Nesting. So anybody hey, who has questions, there's so many people here going, hey, Chris, hey, oh, how's it going? Um, <laughs> What's up? It's really sweet. I mean, there. It's really nice to see so many people. That, you know, Lily and Dabney and Casey Davis. Oh, uh, so Lillian. Here. Yeah. I miss my old friends. Thank you, thank you, everyone, for being in here. So. Jamie, oh, you Lane, you want to read some of those? Yeah. So some people who are here. Let's see. So Lillian, Dabney, Vicky Nesting, Casey Davis, Todd Kruger. Um. Oh, Janie Herman. It goes on now. Janet Lockhart. Um. And there was a question, actually, which I think any of us could go into. But Vicky wants to know what months are covered in the publishing seasons that always confuses her. So I don't know who wants to take that, but there are three seasons. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Not I mean, it took in me general, maybe, in publishing. I'll never you know? admit how long it took me to figure this out. But yeah, three seasons. Winter is January through April. Summer. I'm just testing myself here may through august <laughs> yes and then yes. fall september it's through december yay nailed it um yeah so three seasons you know we can talk we talk about spring books because obviously you know may in our mind or you know april that that's it's spring but for the sake of our organization and our publishing schedule it's those three seasons so Get that tattooed, Vicky, and you <laughs> never forget it again. Yeah, actually, she didn't even ask that. It, I was testing you. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought Vicky, I don't know why I thought Vicky asked that. No, she okay. did. She did. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So, Christopher, do you yes. want to talk to us about some books that you're working on, what you're jazzed about? You've got a few. Yeah, that you're... yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I tried, I tried to show the book stack. These are some of the books that I've worked on over the past year um god there's so many and i'm scared to topple the stack but the ones that i have immediately planned oh wow you even have a slide how how organized of you thank you my people spot like that <laughs> charlene hunter gold this is a finished book it's another difference between library i feel like i was always stacked with galleys now it's generally finished books because i have to do the product shots and everything so i have so many, so many hardbacks, but um, Charlene Hunter Galt, My People, Five Decades of Writing About Black Lives. Um, this just recently published, Charlene Hunter Galt is a renowned, uh, she, she's a reporter, she's a writer, she's one of, I think, she's a hero of the civil rights movement. She is many, many things, but I think, you know, this is a collection of her reportage across five decades and she's written for numerous outlets she was she's often like she was often the only woman in the newsroom and she's really telling the story of black lives i think as they are un what's the best word i can use it's they're, they're all very humanistic again it's not like over it's not emotional reportage it's you know just lives of black people black americans day to day what they're facing the issues they're facing and how relevant shockingly relevant so many of this so much of her writing is whether it's 40 years ago or today a lot of these you can read them and you would be hard pressed to really get the decade right because some of them just they just sound like they're happening right now 
So, you know, she is just an incredible human. Again, she's written for the New Yorker, the New York Times. Uh, and this book is broken up into sections just based, you know, on different topics. Of course, she does cover politics and everything that's happened over the last, you know, five years in particular, five to 10 years, Black Lives Matter. She's just a fascinating person. Um, and she's, again, interviewed some of the most famous people that you could think of. You can look at the cover graphic there um, just for a hint. But yeah, I just, I found her, she, again, I was lucky enough to have a meeting with her, meet her via Zoom, just like this. And I was just wowed by her insights and her bravery. I mean, this is, especially now, she faces intense scrutiny for speaking truth to power, essentially. And this book is just a testament to that. Uh, and again, I think she's just a brave and powerful, powerful writer. So I, I love this book. I was really proud to work on it. Um, just great praise for it. Numerous, numerous quotes and blurbs for this. Uh, I'll just read one by David Remnick. Charlene Hunter Galt is a hero of the civil rights movement and a brave and glorious writer in the cause of humanity and clear-eyed reporting. She has always held the banner high. So yes, this is on sale now. And yeah, just it, it, a beautiful book. So very proud of that. Um, yeah, so my people. What more to say? Bye. And if any of you have read it, let me know. I don't know in the comments if anyone's mentioning any of this. I'd, I'd be curious what uh, what librarians are reading, if any of them have had a chance to come across any of this. So um, beautiful book, Chicano Bates, Esteban Castillo. Um, so his first book in his brand is Chicano Eats. And as an aspiring cook, sometimes more aspiring than others, uh, it depends, we, as we all know, uh, I shift in and out of cooking, but I love a good, beautiful and well photographed cookbook. And I think Esteban does it with more like beauty and, and just like in an, he has such an incredible design eye as well as being like a really gifted storyteller as we saw in Chicano Eats, you know, talking about his background, you know, um, you know, is a Mexican-American as a gay man, you know, how he finds his heritage through food and through continually revisiting old recipes and, you know, shedding new light on it. So Chicano Eats was so well received and, and you know, people have been clamoring for sweets. And that's what this is. It's, you know, him returning to a lot of these core concepts, visiting his heritage, his culture, and really putting a fresh, beautiful twist on it. I mean, it's very dreamy. You can see, you know, and I, I know I'm like a tiny little box probably on your screen right now, but um, there are 68, no, 76 recipes, excuse me, in this book. Um, and again, he is just like a powerhouse. When I talk about working with authors, you know, it, every author has a different, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They have, you know, everyone's going to have their different strengths and their own, you know, disposition towards whether it's social media, reader outreach, th things like that. And we always want our authors, you know, as we say at HarperCollins, we are an author first company and we always want to work with them on their terms to ensure, you know, that they're comfortable and doing things that they enjoy. So if someone isn't into social media, you know, it's helpful to have a presence, but you don't want to force someone into a situation where they're not comfortable. Esteban is an absolute star, though. He is someone who is so fantastic online. His social presence is incredible. He's a very passionate speaker. He does cooking classes. He's just an incredible partner to have worked on with this book. So it was, you know, a, a great learning experience for me. And of course, we had a really strong track with Chicano Eats. So um, I was really thrilled to be able to work on this book. And again, as a photographer, Esteban takes all of his photos. He does the artistic direction. I just think it's gorgeous and really unique. Um, just a great entry uh, into the market. So always thrilled to work on a cookbook. And uh, this was a real highlight for me this year. So Channel Bakes, which is out now. Oh, yes. So looking forward to this. Vintage Contemporaries, Dan Coyce. So this is coming out January. So galleys right now. You librarians, if you need a copy, let me know. Uh, this is a literary debut by Dan Coyce, uh, who is so well known within, you know, the arts community. He's uh, he's a journalist. He's a writer. Um, 
but this is his literary debut and it's set in New York. I always love a place or a novel where, you know, the place acts as a character. And I think that really holds true here. It's a coming of age novel about a young woman who is aspiring in publishing, which of course can resonate with me. And I think maybe a few of the people here on this call. Um, and it takes place on both sides of the decade. So she, this young woman starts as an aspiring book editor. And then you flip to the other side of the decade and she's kind of tracing two really seminal friendships. Uh, one woman who is no longer alive and the other one who is this rebellious kind of, oh, what's the word? Uh, bowl in a china shop kind of friend who she's lost touch with, um, but now her life is kind of reconverging, one with a, a manuscript from her deceased friend, and then also a reignited relationship with the troublemaker. So, but again, I think it's just such a great setting, the characters, the dialogue. Dan Coyce gets compared, I think, a lot to Ramon Alam, who I know we all love, and I think that's a really apt comparison, and, and in fact, Ramon did blurb this book, uh, it says it's set in a vividly rendered and long vanished New York City. And yeah, again, I just love, you know, I had done an interview with library with Emily Atami for Fault Lines. Very different. That book took place in Tokyo. But I think this book presents you with a similar sort of sweeping embodiment of a city. And it really you just you're able to get lost in it. But again, the dialogue between these characters, just particularly the main two is just so strong and nuanced and uh, I absolutely love it. So it's going so going to, it has a great cover design. Our cover artists always do such incredible work, which makes my job really easy because then I can take those elements and make, you know, all the different marketing stuffs, you know, e-cards, things like things of that nature. And when you have such a cool cover design that really uh, sets the creative juices flowing. So I'm really excited about this book. Uh, both the content and, of course, the marketing plan. So uh, this is coming in January. I, I'm talking a lot. Can, can, does anyone want to say anything? I'm sorry, I'm blabbering on. I uh, read this whole book and loved it. Um, and the cover is beautiful. But I think he just really nailed the complexities of female friendship um, at different points, too, in just a really beautiful and sharp way. And I am really excited to hear his next, like, fiction book because I just I love this one thanks Grace yeah and I think that's so right and I, I think it captures you know friendship is not this you know steady line it's you know it has falls it has pits it has peaks and you know everything that goes along with that and yeah how we court how we kind of charge that over the course of time is really really well done so there's that I have a comment about your cookbook that you just talked about. So people, you've sold mm -hmm. Chicano Bakes. Everybody's excited. But uh, Casey Davis said that they know you like cookbooks because they remember when you made something from Burt Toast. <laughs> <laughs> Burt Toast. Yeah. So you can, you know, I'm passionate. I'm a passionate guy. I just got an air fryer, though, for everyone watching. So if you have top tier air fryer recipes. I love the place. air fryer recipe. Stick it in. Yeah. yeah. It in. All right. Good. When we yeah. were we were doing that last, I think it, maybe that was our our last episode or our second. I don't know. It was toward the end of your run, Chris, and we were you and Lainey and I were taking recipes out of cookbooks, and you were just, I think, just super stressed about everything. It was like I'm <laughs> ending this job. I'm starting a new job. It's a million things going on, and so you just burnt toast. <laughs> genius I manage yeah, yeah. yeah. Maureen Roberts wants to know what is your marketing strategy or how does your marketing strategy differ when you work on a cookbook versus a novel well, that's a good question yeah it's a great question um and it is a little different insofar as of course we don't do galleys and you know early review copies with cookbooks so you know that kind of outreach happens a little later. You know, I think so much of what we rely on for advertising and for outreach, you know, a lot of it, a lot of it is just like, oh, you know, what's the phrase nose to ground? Is that even a phrase? Just a lot of like direct outreach to people online, like just searching through Instagram, searching, you know, through our lists for people who are passionate about a given genre like influencers who have a strong following and in particular for cookbooks and for any genre fiction, you know, that's always a helpful avenue. 
So, you know, the, the mechanics of that are pretty much the same, ex except for I'm just, you know, generally going to be doing outreach for a finished book to a cookbook influencer versus, you know, doing the early galley outreach and then the follow up for fiction. Um, and of course, you're doing outreach to different readers as well. Um, so beyond that, you know, I feel like every book, whether it's you know, even in the same genre, you know, you have blueprints from past uh, campaigns that you can use for inspiration in, in a given genre. That's why, you know, comp titles are so important, just as they're important for librarians. You know, they're important for us as we craft campaigns and seeing what worked and what didn't. Um, but yeah, beyond that, it's pretty much... I hate to say the same, you know, it's just outreach to different people. But beyond that, you know, it's crafting different messaging, I suppose. But, um, you know, we approach advertising generally the same. We'll just, you know, pursue different targets, different verticals, things like that. Um, yeah, so that's, you know, because a lot of the, like the blurb outreach and stuff for novels, a lot of that's done with the editor. And of course, that's not really as big a part of cookbooks it's more like who is the author what's their platform so oftentimes if we're doing a cookbook they're going to have a larger platform versus like a debut novel where the author might be you know relatively unknown so you do approach things a little differently there as far as how you you know leverage the built-in audience of an author but that's not really a distinction between cookbooks and novels that's just an author by author basis hmm. no. rambling again but there you go there's my answer no it's great. It's perfect, actually, because, you know, gives us the the unedited from the heart answer, which is what anybody wants. So, OK, yeah. All right. Now. We'll oh, see. yeah. Will Leach and Lenny, I mean, you have you presented this already? I probably won't do it justice if you have already. I haven't. Um, I'm the excited, time has though. come. Well, you were such an incredible advocate for How Lucky, which was a really fantastic debut novel by Will Leach. Uh, Will is beloved to me, first and foremost, because he founded Deadspin, which is an old sports pop culture blog site that went through some changes and lawsuits. and whatnot. It's just like not, it's really non-existent at this point in my eyes, but it was a fantastic website, which I adored. Uh, and some that's neither here nor there aside from he's just a very uh well known and respective voice in like sports pop culture and pop culture writing um but he's also such a darn fine novelist as we saw with how lucky and i think he's he's an author of 20 that who really aligns with kind of the books he puts out kind of like kevin wilson you know you read a kevin wilson novel and you meet him and you're like oh my gosh this makes sense you're like you know it's like kind of that warm empathetic kind of I don't know. And that's what Will brings, I think, to his books, too. Um, so this book, The Time Has Come, takes place all in, essentially entirely in this small town pharmacy in Athens, Georgia, which where How Lucky took place, too. It's where Will's based uh, and follows just a very diverse cast of char characters slash residents of this small town as they find themselves in a hairy situation surrounding a conspiracy theory that one teacher has really taken it upon herself to prove is correct. So I, I think the easiest way for me to describe this, if you remember the the Pizzagate, you know, where like a, a man stormed, you know, this small mom and pop pizza store because of an online conspiracy. That's essentially what's happening here. This teacher, this kindergarten teacher is convinced there's something very sinister happening. Uh, at this small town pharmacy. So all these various characters along with this teacher find themselves in the pharmacy. And it really is like a slice of America. It's, you know, every single character has something they're dealing with, they, you know, very disparate lives. And, but they're all empathetic. I think that's the thing that Will can pull off here is it's very easy to make a caricature of someone that you don't agree with, but to, you know, really flesh out these characters and put them in a single room and see how things play out and do it naturally and in, in a way that's really readable and, and fulfilling. Um, I, it's just, I think it's a beautiful and unique skill that Will has. And again, he's such a kind and amazing human, so it makes sense. Um, but it's always nice to see those two traits align. So 
Yeah, you know, he's going to, this is a big book for us, uh, and I don't even have the pub, the pub date ahead of me. I think it's April something, May, May, excuse me, May 16th. I'm on top of it. Don't you worry, y'all. I'm on top of it. May 16th. Um, so, you know, we have a little ways for this, but this is going to be a priority title for us, definitely. Um, and again, when we talk about planning for books, this is one that we, you know, flagged very early on given the support that we saw with libraries, booksellers, everyone else. And uh, so it's going to be a, a really, I think, a really fun, fleshed out campaign. Uh, and I think there's a lot we can do with it. And again, Will's a great partner since he's so connected and tireless. I mean, he's always writing, tweeting, working, just being his amazing self. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled that I get to work on this. Um, so yeah, May, and we'll have galleys, I believe, since this is Galley Club, uh, I think we'll have galleys in January. So to get us through those cold winter months. So. Put in the chat our How Lucky conversation. I think you and I, Chris, did that one with mm, Jessica Anya Blau. I think we did those two together for Mary Jane. Right. Oh, that was so fun. That was great. Yes, yes. Yeah, so they yeah. can go back and hear all about How Lucky too and just see how great will is yeah well that's yeah he's yeah i think yeah you get a really great impression of kind of kind of guy he is and um yeah i'm i'm really thrilled on this one uh and i, I think you all have books you want to present so maybe i should i should i shut up for mm -hmm. for a while well, do, you, do you have some reveals some you have a big oh. stack of stack of fun there you want to show yeah sure well i'll do well i do have one actual reveal which this just came in the mail this is not a book that i'm working on directly i will be providing auxiliary support in some way i do hope <laughs> um so i'm thrilled about this i love well i love so many of his books but we have a new Dennis Lehane coming out because it's shiny, beautiful ARE. So Small, small Mercies, Dennis Lehane. Uh, this is on sale in April. Mystic River, ask Virginia about <laughs> Mystic River. And uh, yeah, so always a big deal. It's been quite a few years since his previous novel was published. Um, I believe by Morrow at that point, if I remember correctly. So something like that, but no. I, I, well, that's not here nor there. I, all you need to know, it's a Dennis Lehane novel, um, which is always a big deal. So this is going to be my weekend read. I'm really thrilled to have this coming in the mail. Can I and interrupt then, uh, for one second? Yeah, please, I please. I have it too, because I love it so, although it's blurry because, but you know, <laughs> I know that uh, it's, it's such a great read. I know Janet Lockhart's on here. Janet, are you still there? Because Janet Lockhart was all about this. So I don't know if she's still around. She wants to chime in. But anyway, bring it out, Janet. Bring it out, Janet. Come on. Um, such a great book. It's set in the seventies in Boston, and it's just a uh, lot of, lot of uh, you know, lot going on. Lot going on. Missing kid and 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 busing with these kids and the, oh. Yeah, cover what? photo too. Shocking. They worked really hard on this jacket just to get it right. I know we saw a few versions and different different photos oh, that they would yeah. use. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think they. I, I think it's shocking and totally now that shocking. jacket. Yeah. Love that jacket. Yeah. Um, yeah, me too. Uh, Ma Janet Lockhart says, Mary Pat, a heroine for the ages. That's Mary Pat Fennessy, the mother at the center of the story, who was just, she is, um, Dennis Lehane was on the Dave Dialogue, and he's like, I knew a lot of Mary Pat's growing up. He's like, and I wouldn't want to get in a fight with one of them. I mean, he's, you know, they're tough, She's tough, tough lady. So, um, all right, everybody's super excited about um, about Dennis Lehane. Please ask Chris if he put up his Christmas lights recently for the upcoming season, or does he have them up year round? Not sure why, but I need to know. So asks Janie Herman from Princeton. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm a year rounder for sure. Yeah, always Christmas lights. It's very that's, Stranger Things. I love it. I think that's probably it. Plus, it reminds me of dive bars. I feel like every dive bar that I used to frequent. I don't do it as much, but they all they all use these Christmas lights year round, so it makes me feel cozy. For ambiance, really. Ambiance, exactly. All about the ambiance. So, uh, what else do we have there, Lainey? Who else is writing in? Oh, everybody's excited about Dennis Lehane. They want to know all the secrets. They loved the 
unboxing video of sore or unboxing of that galley um yeah. and yeah pretty much just everybody's very excited yeah Jan uh, uh, janet says that mary pat is a wicked good character uh yes casey davis says dennis lahane was a dave dialogue and he did not hold back no he did not so if you haven't watched that go back and watch it because they're keeping it up for three months on the uh, lj's site nice. all right christopher what else you got this on uh speed round let's see i have this the story of worlds by matt ruff i love matt ruff i did an interview again with the library podcast for his last novel 88 names Usually he does some new, entirely new, like high concept standalone novel, but this is actually his sequel to Lovecraft Country. So uh, as many of you probably know, if you love the book and or the series, which uh, was discontinued. So there's a lot of fans out there who are really looking forward to like, you know, picking up this story. And this literally picks up like right at the end of Lovecraft Country. Uh, and Matt Ruff will always take your expectations and turn them on their head i you know he, again he's just like a very fast paced but really strong brilliant writer uh whose fans include christopher moore neil stevenson amongst others so yeah. you know i i think it's always a big deal and this is gonna be a really fun book to work on this is coming out in february oh i have spine poems if anyone is into spine poems this was a really kind of cute unique book just about you know collecting poems from the spines of books, fun exercise. If any of you can find a big collection of books to do spine poems, I recommend it. Don't know where you do go for that, but um, The Movement Made Us, David Dennis Jr. in collaboration with his father, David Dennis Sr. This is a book about the civil rights movement and the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, father and son senior was one of the original freedom writers and then David Dennis. Junior is a culture writer who was also at the front lines of the Black Lives Matter movement, matter movement, excuse me. And this is kind of, you know, a recounting of Senior's story and then also kind of flashing back and forth with Junior reckoning with everything he's seeing. Um, David Dennis Jr. is the primary writer of this book. And I just have to say he, his prose, like he um, is a pop culture writer. His articles are always really beautiful and stunning and take on you know, really interesting issues, whether it's in hip hop or in sports, you know, he's just one of those guys who can write about pretty much anything and really pull really pressing and important details from, you know, the circumstance. And that's what he's doing here. I mean, it's just so well written. You learn so much. It's relatively short, um, but you learn a ton about the freedom rides and you learn you know, new yeah. perspectives about how the fight for civil rights really echoes through generations, how it shapes families, interpersonal relationships, everything. Um, uh, such a special book and it was a real honor to work on it. So, and that is out now. I have so many, but I've already talked your ears off. I feel like I could go on and on. There's a big stack here, but if you have any questions on, see if I can pull this off any of these books oh my god that's such a great screen grab laney can you do there it there they are so funny actually didn't nice. work on moth but that's a that's a beautiful book as well but the rest high desert great graphic memoir love it i think it should be a spine Abby morgan <laughs> uh, there you, yeah, if you if you can if you can sort one out based on these titles all right let's see yeah, bright know. ages the cage wonder seeker all day is a long time i feel like this works done that sounds yeah. like a wrap <laughs> okay i try lady's new career <laughs> so there you are there's my book stack that's awesome chris don't hurt yourself now oh. we have a question from vicky for chris yeah. um she said i know you read widely for work but what is your favorite personal genre a great question horror or i haven't been reading much sci-fi or fantasy recently which is weird because that was my go-to for a long time um yeah if there's like a good horror novel that will genuinely scare me i'm i'm all up for that so if anyone has suggestions again I, i've already talked about this book a trillion times but thanks to laney mays it's one of my all-time favorites uh, plain bad heroines. Like, if you have anything like Emily M. Danforth's plain bad heroines, that, that 
that book scared my socks off. So that's so that's good. What I'm too. So good. And Bring it's like 500 pages, but you read it. Like I read it in two days. It was just. Yeah. I didn't want it to end. I was really bummed. <laughs> so that's, that's what I'm into. Maureen has a question. Mm -hmm. uh, she, Maureen, Maureen Roberts. She said, I saw a brave new world in the stack. What's the strategy behind re releasing classics? Yeah, well, I mean, so we always are looking at opportunities for books that are um, in the public domain or anything like that. We have great, you know, partners as far as, you know, illustrators that we've collaborated with before, as is the case here. So let me, I can pull it out here. So this is illustrated by Fred Fordham who did the To Kill a Mockingbird graphic novel. So he's, you know, a great partner. He's brilliant. Um, you know, so as far as strategy goes, you know, I think it's always a, a intriguing and probably strong way to reintroduce a work to new readers. Of course, you know, people who are fans of the book, it's a great collector's item. It's a beautiful, you know, presentation. It's a great, it's a great book. But yeah, I do think graphic novels do just offer a really fun and new entry point to readers. Uh, and I think that was a big opportunity that we saw in the lead up to publication. So again, as far as guiding our outreach, it's not too hard to find Huxley fans. So it's really just, you know, about finding the right time, the right opportunity and people with large followings for our outreach. Um, I made a little graphic video using the jacket assets because it's just like a fun illustrated moving image. Um, but yeah, so that's that as far as the strategy of like identifying stuff like this, again, I think it just depends. That's not really my decision. What we're publishing is graphic novels, but I think it was such a smart and well executed project. And I'm looking forward to see what we do in the future. So Chris, Janie Herman says, can we see inside? Can you? No. <laughs> yeah. Um, I honestly thought you were serious. I'm like, what? <laughs> no. All uh, right, let's see. So I think this is the opening page. Uh, yeah, so this is, I don't know if this is all uh, for all ages appropriate, but yeah, really striking work though. I, yeah, it's kind of those. All right, cool. Yeah, looks like everyone's having a good time. So, yeah. <laughs> um, sort of like our olive editions, if people know about those, or if you don't, they're put out by Harper Perennial. And those are cool too. And they're just, you know, classics that are repurposed in a limited print run. And um, I think they're $10 or something. It's, you know, and it's just um, once they're gone, they're gone. But they're so cool because they're all repackaged and they're just, neat they're very eye-patching and mm -hmm. it's, like Chris said it's a great way to sort of you know introduce introduce these books to new readers now um um Lainey Grace is there anything that we need to show before um I think there is Grace drum roll please Grace we're just going to trip down memory lane somebody I'm has to roll. Miss, I think, you know, like we're having a party and we could use like a break to have some cake maybe. Oh, yeah, we can have some cake for sure. All right. Happy book birthday. We love these books. Chris, I don't believe you worked on either one of these, but <laughs> we're all under one big roof. We all want a possible things. Catherine Newman. Kevin Wilson's book, Now is Not the Time to Panic. We've talked about these for forever, so we don't need to do it again. All we need to tell you is that they're on sale today and we love them. Um, do we have any videos to show? Well, I just want to say for Catherine Newman, I'm putting the link to that library thing the, that she wrote for Oprah Daily in the chat. It's phenomenal. So We All Want Impossible Things is a very... You know, it's a very tender and, and heart tugging book about uh, two women who've been friends for forever and one is unfortunately losing her battle with cancer. So it, while it is sad, there are also moments of just great levity. There's a great New York Times review that just came out for this book and it's 
glorious. So I, Lainey's put that in the chat room. But also this author wrote this really wonderful, very funny piece, as Lainey said, for, for Oprah Magazine and it's about libraries. So you must check it out because I just think it counterbalances, you know, what this book presents, which is, as I say, a little mix of, you know, seesaw between sad and, and funny, but the, this piece is all funny and you've got to read it. Okay. We also, we had her on the, the Facebook live a few months ago and it was such a great interview. It was my, my first one with an author. Maybe it was, I don't know, but it was a great one. <laughs> Just go to YouTube and you can find it. There's the article. There's the review. It's fabulous. It's so good, says Evelyn Hershkowitz. And my phone is ringing. I turned that off. Okay. Now, somebody asked Chris if you missed the Tiki Hut. <laughs> that was, yeah. I mean, I missed I miss the alcohol that I drank under the Tiki Hut for sure. <laughs> And I miss my crew. Yes. I know. I know. We'll take you out for a drink. Um, so let's trip down memory lane for a second because we have Chris and we have our we have our captive audience of Chris fans. Let's play some funny videos. Here's one. memory lane <laughs> we always did these yeah. fun videos for ala and that was our promo for ala in denver yes yes even though i mean the conference center is not that close to the mountains we were very very <laughs> skiers the magic yeah, we are. We are. movies yeah right. <laughs> we have another one this was in uh, seattle yes. there we go I bet it's not close to where it is supposed to be either. <laughs> 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 oh wait, sorry, there's <laughs> the sound is like oh I forgot about the sound, the squish. The sound. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need some kind of disclaimer that's like objects in video are closer than they appear. Yeah. <laughs> My first week here, Virginia showed me that and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Your time trip. is coming, Grace. Your yeah. Time is coming. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody's like, this is, yes, Library Love Fest is the goofiest team in library marketing. And that's why you're so loved. Thank you, Jane Yearman. <laughs> we will continue those videos, I know. Super fun. Um, Hey man, this is what else do we have to show? What do we, we, you know, the hour has flown and I'm so happy about it. Is there anything else key that we want to show? Well, we have um, a Facebook Live next week. Do you want to talk about that before we? You do it. On? Me? I'll do it. Sure. Um, next week, we are hosting um, the author of Independence and the author of Librarian of Burned Books. I'm really excited about this. If you caught uh, Brianna at the last, um, and we had her was at the day of dialogue. It was such a good discussion. I feel like people were so engaged and she had a lot of really cool research to show as well. And I'm really excited. Virginia, your thoughts? <laughs> oh, that was great. I mean, it was just, you know, it was um, a lot of programs to choose from at that thing. And everybody's trying to figure out, you know, 
uh, oh, hoping, you know, people are going to come to listen to your author because there's so much to choose from. And it was awesome. So again, if you, if you, did, that's the first time we met her too. And it was, um, she was lovely. And so it's such a compelling book, both of these books. I mean, Chitra Divakaruni, we're going to learn a lot uh, from these two authors. This is the brainchild of Lainey Mays. We're going to start trying to do some, you know, some like themed um, interviews. And so this is, we're kicking this off and we'll be doing more of it. But if you're a fan of historical fiction, uh, next Tuesday, you'll be listening to these two authors tell you really, they're very compelling stories and um, it's very different stories. You're going to get a, like a, a nice sampler platter of history. A nice sampler platter. Um, and also if you saw Brianna on, on Day of Dialogue, don't worry, we've solicited some photos and other historical things. So we're hoping we'll have more things to share. So yes, it will not be a repeat. It will be and it'll be cool because we'll bring them both on at the same time. They'll talk to each other a little bit and then, you know, we'll bring then we'll each other time to talk and then we'll bring them back at the end and please bring your questions and uh, you can download the, the e-galley in, uh, in Edelweiss or that galley. I'm sure. I don't really know, but I'm sure that's true. Um, oh my goodness. Okay. Um, let's see. 255. We're not talking about any of our books because this was so wonderful to have this hour with you, Chris. This was so, so cool. Well, thanks for having me. It was, it was uh, like riding a bike, almost. I, <laughs> I need to work on my book buzzing a little bit, I feel, but uh, nope. it's, it's, no, well, it's all, it's always great to see you all. Um, I'll see you maybe tomorrow, right? We'll be in the, are you going to be in the office? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Oh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, maybe I'll see you there. I hope so. Um, just one thing, I, Lainey, you want to talk about the LLF guest post that Chitra put in there? Because there's there's so much stuff in the chat, you guys. So I want you to not miss any of this stuff. Yeah, just supplemental reading. It's not for this book, but a, a, a book before that we published from Tr Chitra. She wrote a guest post for the blog and it's pretty fantastic. So we just wanted to circulate that again. And I mean, it's not for this book warning, but it, it'll it it'll give you a flavor of who, sh who they are. And uh, Janet Lockhart says, Chris, you can still bring the buzz. Yeah, there's a lot Thank of love in this chat. Lots of oh love. Gosh. We really go back and watch it. It's like there's so much love. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I miss you this. all, everyone watching. I mean, yeah, that's, that's you know, there have been so many great things about the new job, but of course, the relationships I've built over my six years, those are invaluable. And I, yeah, hope everyone's been getting through the last few years well. And uh, I'm thinking of you. So don't hesitate to reach out if you need books, especially, or just you want to shoot the shoot the breeze. stuff. Let's say shoot breeze. The breeze. Okay. Yeah, shoot the breeze. <laughs> this is a PG show. Oh, why did that happen? Since when? <laughs> 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 oh my God, that's so funny. Um, um, I don't know if we have time. We have a few minutes left. Do we have time to show the Jessica Williams? How long is that video? Or should we it's put like it? Under three minutes. Oh, okay. So we talked to one of our editors. We literally popped into her office and said, I want to talk about books now? And she was like, okay. So she is the, well, she, you can watch the video and you'll see. This is really terrific because she's a fantastic author. We love, uh, editor. We love her. And she, um, My Dark Vanessa was one of her books. Um, let's show the video because you'll see all those it's a couple minutes yeah so i guess before we even share the video chris i don't know if you know we made this but we did so you're welcome um <laughs> chris but. Connolly. oh my god these are so funny you can go back to youtube and watch all of these wacky videos they're all there so you can watch chris doing crazy things like dressing up like harry potter and I don't know, being in front of a very, very strong fan <laughs> talking about the Windy City. Go to Library Love Fest, go to YouTube, type in Library Love Fest and have yourself a laugh. Chris, you're a doll. Here from the library marketing team at HarperCollins. I'm here with Jessica Williams, executive editor at William Morrow. Jessica is the editor of so many wonderful books. 
All of these were acquired and edited by Ms. Jessica Williams. You know these books, you've read these books. She is phenomenal. Jessica, how are you? I'm good. I'm excited to be here with you guys today. Well, tell us what you've got excited about for 2023. Yeah, so this, just starting with Order of On Sale, really good actually, comes out in January on the 17th. This is a very funny novel from a screenwriter who you might know from her work on Schitt's Creek and Working Moms and some other stories. This is about a 28-year-old who is going through a messy divorce and trying to pick up the pieces. Um, highly recommend it if you're looking to laugh and maybe cry a little bit too. Um, in February, on Valentine's Day actually, I have this dark fairy tale from Roshni Chachki, who you all might know from her middle grade and YA work. And this is a dark fairy tale about a marriage, but it also delves into the wife's secret past and it's set in a haunted manner. Has a really shocking twist, very beautifully written for those who know Roshni is writing. So really recommend this if you're looking for a sort of dark romance for February. Um, coming in April, I have this beautiful coming of age story, debut novel that has been 30 years in the making from author Melissa Casacchino. She was recently just named one of the Indies Introduced picks for the winter spring season. And this is about Carmen and Grace, two girls who are cousins, but more like sisters coming of age in the Bronx. And they don't have a lot of choices in their lives and are sort of brought into this world of drugs by a powerful matriarch who shows them the way and empowers them, but at the same time, brings danger into their lives, and then the two girls have to decide if they want to get out and how to get out. I cry so much every time I've read this book, so I would highly recommend reading it um, if you haven't already. And then very early, it doesn't even have a cover yet. I mean, it has a cover, but not here. This Inkblood Sister Scribe is coming in June, and this is a magical book about magical books featuring librarians and bookshops. Um, in this novel, this is a debut from Emma Torres's, and the books are in the collection are written like spells, and they've been written in blood, which I know sounds a little dark, but this book is actually very charming and has and, and funny. And so it's a sort of magical adventure that follows two sisters after their father's death as they're trying to figure out this dark secret at the heart of their book collection. And in the process, they uncover this nefarious organization that has been collecting books for centuries that is called the library. That's, I think, all I will say about this one, but there's a lot of excitement about it here, and I highly, highly re recommend it for fans of The Midnight Library and people who love books like Practical Magic by Alice Hoffman, um, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. So look out for Inkblood Sister Scribe in June. And I think that's it for now. So two things. One, that was one take, you all. She did not need to redo that. That was one take. I didn't edit it. Two, Chris Plain Bed Heroines is in the background. Jessica's also the editor of the book we just called out earlier. So just wanted to call that out. And a third thing is that we are doing TikTok and other videos on Instagram. It's on both. So if you want to see more stuff like this, that we crazy shenanigans in the office, <laughs> let us know because we literally just popped in and we're like, can you tell us about some books? She's like, okay. So Follow us uh, at Harper Library on both if you want to see what we're coming up with. Love it. That was that was amazing. That was amazing book talking. She's phenomenal. Uh, and Chris, you did amazing book talk. You were phenomenal. And Grace, uh, Casey Davis says that you need to get an initiation. So we have to think of something to do to you. And it's got to have something to do with hazing. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> no, no hazing. But. Good, good. I don't know. When Lainey first started, we wrapped her up in Christmas paper and made her stand under hot lights while the camera got fixed. She was, she was dripping. <laughs> we had to wait like 10 minutes before. Right. What did you say, Chris? But that's not hazing. That's show business. <laughs> yeah. So. I was like, mm. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Chris was the one like, can you like poke a breathing hole? Like she's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> poke a hole in that Christmas wrap. Put a straw in there. <laughs> the whole face was covered whole face yeah oh yeah and then i well i had like Safely. a little bitty i could see out and breathe oh. and then i unwrapped. we should find that video and put it in the chat 
That was really funny. <laughs> it wasn't me. Um, hey, listen, we could go on and on, but we know that everybody's got to get back to work. Chris, thank you. This was great. It was great to have you back here talking books and everyone is wow. thrilled to see you. Well, it was great to see you all as well and uh, getting with y'all the best in the biz. Happy to see this new team. Grace, welcome. Thank you. Lainey, you're fantastic as ever. Virginia, fearless, fear, fearless, fearless leader. Uh, you know, we're like Harper's lucky to have you. And uh, I'm so fortunate to get to work with you still. So yeah. Uh, and well, to the librarians out there, miss you all. Be well. Oh, you're sweet. And Lainey, rock star and Grace, I hope you didn't feel too left out, but you know, we're so thrilled that you're with us. I mean, we <laughs> had a great team. We have a great team. And um you know, I feel very fortunate to work with you guys. And Chris, I'm so happy that you're an earshot away so that you can, well, and actually every time Chris goes to the men's room, he's right, he's right by a little <laughs> cubicles. I was like, oh. See you tomorrow. It's nice to not have too much separation anxiety we yeah. get to see in the office. Yeah. So That's right. That's right. So everyone, thanks for, what'd say, Grace? I was going to say, this was like a library love fest celebrity sighting for me. So I had a great time. Wow. <laughs> absolutely all right well lots of books here lots of love and love for librarians thanks so much for this this was a lot of fun um and we'll talk to you again we hope you guys can come next tuesday to uh hear about these two historical fiction books by these really wonderful authors so that's going to be a blast so join us and chris laney grace thanks for another fun hour and librarians thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time Big newlywed game. Goodbye, kiss. <laughs> <laughs>